You're listening to the Packernet Podcast Network. I'm Alex Rodriguez. And I'm Jason Kelly. From Bloomberg, this is The Deal. Each week, you will hear us in conversation with business icons. This show will explore deal-making across sports, media, and entertainment. That is a harsh lesson in business. Sports is not and, as uh, simple you know, I, as bringing a bunch of big names together. I didn't want to do another stomp you out speech. It opened so, up so many you know, more doors. The show is called The, the deal. deal. Listen to The Deal. Listen to The Deal on Spotify. This episode is brought to you by Pepsi Wild Cherry. Pepsi Wild Cherry is bursting with delicious cherry flavor and a sweet, crisp taste that gives you more to go wild for. Getting wild may look different these days, but whether it's opting for a solo Friday binge watch or a big night out, everyone can indulge in their wild side with Pepsi Wild Cherry, also available in Zero Sugar. So grab a Pepsi Wild Cherry and get wild. Actually, it's the, it's the lead play in our, in our offense. <laughs> Drive down the first man who's inside. Pull back and get him. Take the first man outside. Down no one shows. Go right by them and feel inside. If the YN has the linebacker taken out, he cuts inside. If the YN has the linebacker in, he comes all the way around. If you look at this play, we'll be trying to get him to seal here and a seal here and try to run this play in the alley. Y'all said, man, you blew Clayton now. <laughs> Nobody on the screen here. What's up, guys? Welcome to the Packers Total Access Post Game Show. My name is Clayton. You can check us out on Packernet.com. You can find me on Twitter at Packers underscore access. You can email us, Packers Total Access at gmail.com. You can text us, 865-658-5824. So the Packers drop a heartbreaker in the Meadowlands, um, 24-22 to to the Giants. You see the ticker. That's the only thing we need on the ticker tonight, guys. That's a tough one for sure. Um Man, I will say this, though, outside of the Saints game, probably the most exciting game we've watched all year. Um, I know people were upset, people are aggravated, people are frustrated, all those things, but that was a fun game to watch, man. Um, the turnovers, tough, really tough. Obviously, that's the story of the game for me. You can't turn the ball over three times um, and expect to win a ball game. The Malik Heath grab, both of them. Pretty cool that that Jay Love decided to go to Heath in both situations with the game on the line. Really thought that was cool. Um, says a lot about how they feel about Malik Heath. Heck of a grab and to get it over the pylon. But there at the end, man, I'm, I'm, I'm watching them kind of slowly move the ball down the field, Tim, and I'm thinking, all right, man, stay in shell, stay in shell, force a long field goal. And what do, what do we do? We go to hurts. man coverage and get blown up. <laughs> <laughs> and and online, everybody on Twitter, this prevent defense. This pre- I'm going. You you're not even listening to Hall of Famer Troy Aikman say they were in man coverage. You're just toting the same old line. So again, we got our precious man coverage. What did I say on the pregame show? When you somebody asked, you know why why what's the advantage of playing that shell, playing that style of defense, right, Tim? What did I say? The disadvantage is when you play man coverage. You give up explosive plays. You gave up a huge explosive play and gave him a chip shot field goal. Now, listen, is that on Joe Barry? Absolutely. Absolutely. He needs to, in my opinion, excuse my language, I apologize, but he needs to nut up and sit down with everybody and say, listen, either we run this defense or we don't. But this wishy-washy in between, it's got to stop. Remember the pass interference earlier in the game, Tim? Man coverage. All the explosive plays through the air today came against man coverage. Also, which defense do you think it's easier to scramble on? Which we can look at the box score here. Mr. DeVito had, um, what was it, 10 carries for 71 yards. Which one do you think it's easier to scramble on, zone or man? So, you know, it's, it's worked this year from time to time. 
um, playing aggressive like that. Tonight it didn't. That's just uh, that's what it is. But like someone else pointed out too, Tim, and I'll get your take here, man. Um, someone else pointed out, why do you leave that much time on the clock, you know, when you're down there trying to score a touchdown at the end of the game? It's a good point. It's a valid point. You're going no huddle when you know you've only got, you know, a limited amount of time. You don't want to leave too much time on the clock for the Giants. But at the same time, you're top priority there, man. It's hard for me to fault LaFleur in that because you're just trying to get in the end zone somehow, some way, right? Last thing you want to do is use up every second and not get in the end zone. So um, it's kind of how I see that. What are you, what's your initial thoughts, man? I can see it on your face there. You're uh, you're hurting a little bit just like we all are. But I do want to say this. I think Jake has the uh, the top comment of the night already. He said, hello, is this October? That felt like October, didn't it, man? Yeah, and, um, you know, I don't want to pick on anyone, but obviously the worst game I've ever seen Keyshawn Nixon play. It was bad, man. Certainly, certainly in his time here. Um, And mistakes that really cost us. You know, we talk about that busted coverage there at the end. That that really – I mean, that was when – I'll be honest, I had to walk away. I had to walk outside and take a breath. And when I saw that, I stopped charting, and I knew knew it was over when I saw that. And um, so that was sad. And then, you know, the muff punt, you know, and then the – you know, you're basically giving them a touchdown – on that i mean you know again i'm not going to pick on Keyshawn, but we didn't get great games out of a lot of guys today but right. then we did have then we did have some really nice games from a few guys uh today and you know it's kind of cool we talked about pre-game i said uh you know malik heath sighting inbound today you know and uh, we got it we got it there towards the end like you said you know he was getting those targets in crunch time um you know i wish we we you know that Tutter would have stood the first time, but you know, we get back down there, go right to him. Um, and he played big boy football down near the goal line there, man. That was just great. Um, so it wasn't all bad. Um, and you know, a lot of this is, this is definitely a team loss guys. I mean, our, our staff let us down at times tonight. Uh, our players let us down at times tonight. The, you know, the special teams let us down, the offense let us down, the defense let us down. It, it was, you know, you win and lose as a team. And this is exactly what coach LaFleur talked about. Um, we saw this coming a mile away. We talked about trap game. We talked yep. about this for days on end. This team came in there, and this is this is the result. And here, I hope it humbles them. I hope these guys are humbled by this by this experience. Um, but yeah, it was a little disheartening to see our defense give up. Um, you know, give up that uh, those plays there at the end. I really thought for a second there that you know we'd hold them. We would get out of there and we'd, we'd squeak out with that one-point victory, you know. But uh, it just wasn't in the cards tonight, I guess. Yeah. Trying to go through and mark some of the comments because there's some really good ones in here, man. Um, Josh Martin, first of all, thank you for the super chat, buddy. He said, ah, oh, the old Jordan Love is back. Um, bad game, man. Hey, that PFF grade is going to be – that's what was so – like I was already drawing it up in my mind when they were going down to, to score the go-ahead touchdown. Like even with all these mistakes – we can win this game. And when we scored, I'm like, let's go, dude. If the, yep. if the defense can just hold up. Do you talk about the momentum that's created in having that bad of a game and still getting the dub? I mean, that stuff can really carry over momentum too. But, yeah, Jordan loves uh, – it was bad. It was bad. The, the passes in the first half, man, there were a bunch of wobblers. Now, you got you got to step back and say, is this – the normal baseline Jordan Love or the last three games? Like we said, the last three games seem to have been the peak to this point, right? So just like anything, it's it's like this. Success is like this. It's not like this, <laughs> right? You're going to have steady setbacks. So I still believe in Love. I do. And someone actually tabbed me on Twitter and said, let me guess, you're going to still say Love's the guy? Yeah. At this point, yeah. I have to. Yeah. yeah. Did we think he was going to finish the rest of the season not turning the ball over? Like, that's the thing, too. Like, you got unrealistic expectations if we're sitting here pretending like he's not going to have another bad game the rest of the year. And, and the crowd that was out screaming, fire Joe Bear, or fire Matt LaFleur, uh, you know, Jordan Love's not the guy. They're back. All of a sudden they're back. They disappeared for three games, but now they're back. And you get into the point where you just got to ignore them, Tim. You, you got to, and, you know, like the last tweet I put out was like, we should really take, everybody should take note of the people who seem like they're happy, they're excited right now. They they get to brag that the Packers lost tonight. Those aren't real fans. They're just not, man. So yeah. anyway, Josh, thank you for the super chat. But yeah, I can't I can't argue with you there, man. That's one of the worst games Jordan's played all year, right? 
Um, but you're going to have those inconsistencies. There's no doubt about it. Uh, Greg Rice in the chat says, brutal. I don't know what we're doing, but we keep making mobile quarterbacks that can't throw look like world beaters. DeVito, 158 yards rushing. Did he have 158 yards? No, that's not accurate. Let me yeah, see. I'm going to check. 71 on the ground, I think. Yeah. yeah I don't know where – I don't have my notes in front of me because I, I honestly don't know where I I'm on my <laughs> notebook. Um, it might be under the couch or behind right. the television. I don't know. But uh, I'll, I'll find my notes for Good Morning Lambo for sure. No, you're good, dude. You're good. I've got some uh, quarter notes here we'll hit on. Uh, first quarter, here, here was the notes I had for the first quarter. Love, extremely inaccurate. Penalties galore on special teams. My God, Rudy Ford. And uh, I, I still don't know about that blindside block. Dude. Oh, that was total BS. How do you blindside <laughs> block a guy that you're facing? I, yeah. I don't know how. <laughs> I don't know what that was. That was kind of. Yeah. And then, of course, the Carrington Valentine pass interference. I don't know if you guys noticed, but literally when they met at the mesh point, the receiver grabbed Carrington's face mask and he got called for pass interference. So not sure how that works. If anything, it should have been offset in penalties, but that's not the reason they lost this game. No. So we, we need to be, let's don't go the Pat Mahomes route here. Um, yeah, Dylan no, looked good no, no. in the passing game again, Tim, catching and running, man. Really turned it on there in the first quarter. And then, of course, you had Reed with the touchdown run. What were you going to say, buddy? Oh, no, I I just uh, – yeah, Dylan looked good today. Uh, I totally co-signed that. You know, Patrick Taylor looked pretty good for us too today um, at times. So, uh, you know, it wasn't all bad. It wasn't all a dumpster fire. But uh, I don't know. This is not – this is not good. I'll tell you that. It's not good to be in – what are we in now, a five-way tie for the, for the wild card or something? Yeah, it's uh, it's wild. I think there's like five or six teams that are now at six and seven. Yeah. Well, we, just, can, we can officially end all the all the nonsense. We're going to win the division talk. So that's right, that's right. over with now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's done. That ended tonight. Yeah, for sure. All right, let's see. Let's go back to the chat here real quick. Um, Red Mo said I called Tommy Danny so many times tonight. Danny Dimes. Um, hey, you got to give him credit, man. He played a good game. You know, he played within what they were giving him. The the defensive line, people remember in the pregame show, we're going to get six sacks. We're going to get five sacks. We're going to get four. Not one sack. Not one. They just kept rushing up the field past them. He'd step up, take off, and run. And, again, when you're playing man coverage, your back is to the quarterback. And I know it, they didn't play man coverage 100% of the time tonight. But on a lot of those scrambles, we're going to go back and watch Chalk Talk. I'll be very, very surprised if I find myself going, no, that was zone. Because I'm telling you, man, they're – there was nobody looking at the quarterback because they were all, for the most part, had their back to the QB. Um, Chris N says Kaepernick signing in New York. Everybody's got a little PTSD from Kaepernick. There's no doubt about that. Greg Ross says so much for feasting on sacks. Absolutely. Um, Paul Robertson, Jordan Love looked rattled most of the game. He did early. It's it's crazy, too, because the one positive you could take out is he kind of settled down at the end. You know, he kind of. Kind of yeah. down at the end, and uh, I'd be interested to see how the line grades out because the the pass pro didn't look that yeah right looked the, that great today. Yeah, when they when they hit home on that four man rush, it was like oh man, right there in the fourth quarter, that was the embarrassing part for me. Uh, F one Groiper, I guess how you say it, uh, embarrassing two point call from Lafleur. Yeah. I didn't like it either, but if he gets in, we all love it, right? But I agree. I, it's just like you you're having success spreading them out, and then you go to just kind of the 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 what was it? It was it was a end around to Jaden Reed. Am I thinking right? Kind of like a sweep or something. Yeah, look, an, an, yeah, another jet motion type deal. Or run, run eight yards horizontally when you only need two vertically. Right, yeah. like just yeah. once. I'd like to just let's throw it back, man, and just you know pound the ball. You know, give yep. it to Dylan uh, inside zone or something. Just pound it, a little tush push, right. and get in there, or a or little, set, uh, or set that up and then run that. You know, that read cool. option. Yeah, but you know, we saw Jordan in the early on running that read option, and he and you know that that cost us that turnover. Yeah. That was him. He took a bad angle. You know, he should have ran that off. You know, to the pylon. It, when, when you stop your feet like that in the NFL, and you think you're going to shuffle and juke someone, it's it's very rare that it happens. You know, we do see guys do it, but that 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 hurt us right there. Um, yeah, but um, you know, so did so did a lot of the gadget plays. You're right. I mean, let's stay on topic here. I mean, Lafleur went to a lot of those, and I they we had one of them work. I think. I think one of them turned out pretty good for us. I'm we were like one. That. We were like one for five on, you know, reverses, and you know, I I don't know. I just felt like uh, 
should have played a little more straight up, I guess. I think he got a little too cute, which is, has yeah. been something that we've talked about before. Um, right. But I also understand that too. You know, you're trying to catch a team off guard and we all know Wink Martindale is his nemesis. This is another, you know, and you can kiss the undefeated in December and all that. I'm, I'm, I'm almost glad now talking this out. <laughs> I'm almost glad that this happened. You know, yeah. Matt LaFleur finally lost a game in December. Let's, we can stop with that nonsense statistic. That means absolutely nothing uh, without Super Bowl rings. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know. I thought, I thought he was, uh, I thought everyone looked uncomfortable from the get go on both sides of the ball, our staff. I just, I don't. I don't think we uh, didn't look good. Didn't yeah. look good. United Bates with a super chat says positive note. Before I lose my chart uh, <laughs> alone after the pod, I believe Tim called Heath for an impact on the pregame. That was an amazing touchdown catch. I, first thing I thought of was Tim was calling it on Malik. Man, Malik he um, two two touchdown two game winning. Yeah, goals. right. Both of those touchdown <laughs> grabs were impressive. Yeah, it was. But thank you, United Bates. We appreciate you, man. I'm, I'm gonna do a little housekeeping here. Jason Clab in the house says, ha ha, this is always his defense in the big moments. He plays soft at the end of the games instead of sticking with what is working. He was in man coverage, my buddy. Yeah, that's not playing soft. Soft that was what here. was working. <laughs> I was waiting all night. I was waiting all night for an adjustment. And we didn't get it. Like, what? just stop blitzing this guy. Right. And here's like, the thing, too, Jason. Buy him or something. Fall back, you know, like. Jason, some of that so very pre-defend defense everyone hates. Yeah. Jason, here's the thing too, man. The only time I hear from you are comments like this. They're negative. On Twitter, the only interaction you have with me on Twitter is to disagree or be negative. What are we doing, man? What's the point? Like, what's the point? Is it just to, just to disagree? Because if it is, let's just part ways, man. I need a big deal, you know? Like I don't this 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 is exactly the type of people I'm talking about. Ha ha! This always his defense in the big moments. Like you're actively rooting for the Packers to be bad so you can feel like you're correct on something, and you're saying they're playing soft, but they're actually playing man coverage. They're not playing the soft quarters coverage. Like it, it's. The secondhand embarrassment, this is what LaFleur was talking about at his presser when he says, when people make comments like that, they just expose themselves. And it's it's embarrassing. It's like, you really think you're doing something here, bro. And you're not. You're like, you're 100% inaccurate. I just, I don't understand it. I don't understand the fans that want to be miserable. It's bad enough the team lost, right? The only thing you should do is, if you see it, you got to say it, what happened and why did it happen, right? Instead, you're choosing to go a route to create a, a different narrative, a different spin, so you feel like you were correct about something. It just, it makes no sense, man. As soon as I seen man coverage, Tim, I was just like, oh my God. Yeah. Oh yeah. There it is. It's a, I, I, I didn't, I almost, I just wanted to go, why did we even have to talk about it in the pregame? Because that's that's the explosive plays we talk about. Smug yep. Industries with the super chat. Thank you, buddy. He said, did Rashawn Gary play tonight? Yes, he did. And he rushed upfield all night long right past the quarterback. Um, I think they were expecting DeVito to scramble right and left horizontally. And all he did was step up in that pocket, tucked it, and ran. Because he, again, step up in the pocket, the rush goes right by you, and you see nothing but the backs of jerseys. Tuck that thing and go, man. So it happened all night long. Um, they put a spy on him in a couple times, and he stood in the pocket and hammered a corner out. And it was like, okay, that's a good quarterback play there. He recognized the spy and made the play. A couple times they uh, they they shut him down on, on some of those scrambling opportunities. But, again, at the end, man, you turn the ball over three times, right? Your quarterback fumbles once, throws an interception. Your punt returner, after the defense got a huge stop, fumbles the ball and gives them excellent field position where they just take it right in and get a touchdown. Um, you can't win ball games like that. That's the story of the game. I know everyone wants to immediately go to the this is all Joe Barry's fault, but the story of the game is turnover differential. It's boring. I get why people don't want to talk about it. But yeah, as far as Rashawn Gary, though, smug, um, appreciate the super chat, buddy. Yeah, they uh they had a good game plan, man. Rushed him right upfield, step up in the pocket, 
and made them a non-factor, just like they made everyone else a non-factor. Not one sack, right, Tim, to the best of my knowledge? Yep, none. Let me double-check just to make sure, but, yeah, there were no sacks, and there was only one quarterback hit, and it was by Rashawn Gary. Only one quarterback hit the entire night. So there you have it. (laughs) Tough look for sure. Um, Let's see here. Brooke in the chat says, we said the way we lose this is shooting ourselves in the foot. How the heck did this happen? Uh, We pretty much just covered it, Brooke. You know, turnover differential, right? Turning the ball over, not playing complimentary football. Um, The Keyshawn Nixon, like, and did did you notice too on the following kickoff, Tim, after the Giants took it in, Jaden Reed was returning it? Yep. Like they took Keyshawn off kick return. Like, all right, look, you, if you're going to be careless with the ball, what is what is going on? Like, with you know, I I thought we brought Basaccia in and promoted him to shore this up. Mm-hmm. And, and our and our special teams is, you know, I, I don't know. I don't want to go down that road again. But we're you know, <laughs> here. We are right <laughs> here. Here we are. Just now, you now, know, just when we thought we weren't we weren't liability. You know, bottom barrel special teams were, were starting to trend that way again. You know, the most penalized special teams unit in football, and and our assistant head coach and special teams coordinator is is supposed to be the, you know, he's like the Matt Lafleur of special teams, right? He's supposed to be the special teams guru, you know. And we have guys that are on this roster that were handpicked by him to come here and contribute. Uh, Keyshawn being one of them, um, you know, Dallin Levitt being one of them, and you know. I don't know what Home Depot he's working at now or or whatever he's doing, but uh, you know something's something's going on in in uh, with this special teams room. I don't I don't know, um, and a lot of these were they were shoot yourself in the foot kind of mistakes. You know, Keyshawn did the right thing on that. When you muff a putt, man, that's right. You got to fall on it. But I don't know where you're thinking it's at any point in time in the NFL if you think you're going to pick that ball up and run again with it you better get that out of your head i like carly's comment in the in the the chat group on twitter when she said well Keyshawn will never make that mistake again <laughs> right because because she's right carly ray's absolutely right about that i i fully believe that i don't think Keyshawn will ever do i mean he may muff another punt again at some point in his career but i don't think he's gonna do anything but fall on it if it happens again but um no it's just i don't know it's sad man i don't know uh What's going on? But that that costly mistakes, you know, in all phases of the game tonight. But special teams is starting to concern me again, and I don't know. It's not a good good place to be right now. And you know, we can we haven't even talked about our kicking game. You know, we didn't talk about Anders tonight. We didn't talk about uh, even Daniel Whelan wasn't putting the ball particularly like his old self tonight. So, got to shore up special teams here going forward. Yeah. You have to. Jake Shavink says in the chat, I don't think Shell would have done anything, honestly. They did a nice job releasing guys late for eight or nine yards. Yeah, they were they were grabbing those chunks with the delayed leaks. There's no doubt about it. I'm just saying it would have been nice to for them to have to attempt a 48-yarder instead of a chip shot because you went aggressive, you know. Um, but, you know, it is what it is, right? They're, either way, both styles of defense have their pros and cons. I'm just – Anybody who knows me, my personality leans toward the, hey, look, let's let's bend but don't break. Let's don't make the big mistake. Um, and, you know, sometimes you make the big mistake, and then other times you uh, you make the big play, right? So um, let's see what else Jake says here real quick, and we'll get to John's super chat. Jake says the real frustration should be directed towards Masatya, the special teams unit. Yeah, just like Tim was saying, Jake, um, you know, it, it's – I'm Alex Rodriguez. And I'm Jason Kelly. From Bloomberg – this is The Deal. Each week, you will hear us in conversation with business icons. This show will explore deal-making across sports, media, and entertainment. That is a harsh lesson in business. Sports is and not uh, as simple you know, I, as bringing a bunch of big names together. I didn't want to do another stomp you out speech. It opened so, up so many you know, more doors. The show is called The, the deal. deal. Listen to The Deal. Listen to The Deal on Spotify. Hey, it's Kaylee Cuoco for Priceline. Ready to go to your happy place for a happy price? Well, why didn't you say so? Just download the Priceline app right now and save up to 60% on hotels. So whether it's Cousin Kevin's Kazoo concert in Kansas City, go Kevin! Or Becky's Bachelorette Bash in Bermuda, you never have to miss a trip ever again. So download the Priceline app today. Your savings are waiting. Go to your happy place for a happy price. 
Go to your happy price, Priceline. Ah, hmm. The first taste of rare bourbon you finally got your hands on. That's nice. At Caskers.com, we make this experience easy. Caskers is a one-stop spirit curator with an impressive selection of exclusive sought-after rare and household names in the realm of premium spirits and champagne. Discover the top flavors of the year now by going to Caskers.com and using code WELCOME10 for $10 off your first purchase. Get $10 off your first purchase with code WELCOME10 at Caskers.com. You talk about the missed field goal. How many missed, How many field goals did he miss? Two? Am I thinking right, Tim? No, just the one, I think. Is it just one? You think See, he missed look, look at me trying to throw Anders under the bus. Um, obviously, the the fumble there is a, is a tough one, too. Um, but, yeah, just – not a good night for special teams. There's uh, no doubt about that. John Vincent with the super chat. Appreciate you, buddy. Jordan Love did not throw accurate on easy layups. Too many end arounds. Good game plan against the run, but could not get pressure. I don't blame Joe on this one. Uh, players didn't step up. You know, on some of the big runs, too, the part that really bothered me was the missed tackles. And uh, Troy was calling it out, too. Um, there was a ton of missed tackles. Where do you see this tackle grade tomorrow? Are you – Jordan Love's grade is going to be low. I'm with you, Tim. I would be surprised if the pass blocking gets a decent grade. Um, and also, uh, obviously, Keyshawn Nixon, both on defense and special teams, he's probably going to grade out in the red. It was that bad. He got burned all night, missing tackles. Um, just a just a tough look all the way around. Thank you so much, John. We appreciate the super chat, buddy. Um, let's see here. Smug Industries with the super chat says, am I crazy for thinking Love wasn't that bad tonight? He was throwing some dimes in the second half. Play calling didn't do him any favors. It was definitely the tell of two halves. I agree, Smug. Like I was saying, down the stretch, he played pretty good. That first half, though, man, those throws were horrible. That one curl they ran, and he literally threw it four yards off the mark and almost threw a pick. Yeah. Um, that was a turnover-worthy play there. Oh, by the way, Devondre Campbell, that was a turnover-worthy play. He just didn't come up with the pick. Immediately the, Immediately on Twitter, somebody tagged me and said, what are they doing with Devondre Campbell in coverage? Uh, man coverage. <laughs> That's how you end up that far down the field. The man coverage that you guys all wanted so bad because you're exactly such right. experts on on football. Yeah, <laughs> That's what if it you got. Want to play man, play man. But to bring someone in to play quarters in Fangio style, and then just all of, all of a sudden abandon it and say, "All right, we're going to play man," it just felt kind of like on offense. Tim's a little too cute, you know, a little too cute. Yeah, exactly. But, again, Smug, thank you so much for uh, the Super Chat, man. I think it was definitely the tell of two halves there. Andy with the Super Chat, appreciate you, buddy. He said, if you see it, you got to say it. That last defensive drive was inexcusable. It was so easy for Tommy. Wide open guys before the big man coverage bust. You're playing Ben, but don't break there. You're playing uh, You're playing quarters, like yeah, uh, Jake you're, pointed you're, out you're, here. You're intentionally giving up that underneath. Right? You're basically saying we will give you those yards to chew up the clock. That's the trade off there. Now, you could play man coverage or play aggressive. Um, both, like I said, both have their pros, both have their cons. Uh, when you look at how it unfolded, the leaks are the key there. Uh, that's what Jake Shavink was just saying. You know, they were just releasing underneath. How do you combat that? You keep people in underneath zone a little more aggressive rather than belling out and trying to take away that second window. But then basically the way that read is for, for DeVito is, okay, Second level, if the backers drop, the leak's going to be there, right? If the backers stay in, the second window is there, or the second level is there with the digs and whatnot. I had to look at the all 22 to make sure, but to me, it looked like they were attacking high low in that sense with some, uh, with some, some digs coming across the middle. So, in that situation, you've got two options for that specific defense. Do you give him the dig and make him throw the deeper pass, or do you give him the leak? If you're asking me, I'm probably giving him the leak, and that's what they did. But you're right, it didn't work. But, again, the man coverage was the, the big one. Like, mm-hmm. nobody you – know, I respect your opinion, Andy, but nobody's going to convince me that the man coverage play wasn't wasn't the killer there, right? The whole it object – killer all was, night long, every time they ran it. <laughs> right. It's how you end up with Dre in coverage downfield. I'll be very, very surprised if Dre was in zone coverage and his, his assignment was, hey – cover 30 yards down the field along the boundary. You know what I'm saying? So it's got to be, it's got to be man coverage or at least zone match with man principles where he had maybe got walked out with a wheel route or something. So um, yeah, like Jake said in the pregame too, I think it was a pregame or maybe it was last night. He said in the chat, um, 
other defensive coordinators are going to do something similar when they come in. The difference you're going to get in other defensive coordinators is they may coach the guys a little bit better on technique, tackling, things like that. But you guys know my opinion is we draft for high ceiling guys, and typically they're not, quote, unquote, as football ready, right? When you get a high ceiling, sometimes you get a low floor. You know, you kind of play in that game. Um, on the surface, it seemed like Lucas Van Ness had a pretty decent game. There was a couple times he stopped the run. Um, but I didn't see him as often as I thought he would either. Preston Smith disappeared tonight too. I know we're all on Rashawn Gary because the contract. I got you. I understand, but um, don't remember seeing much of Preston Smith at all. So, uh, but Andy, thank you for the super chat, buddy. When you say it was inexcusable, man, I agree. Um, the the three turnovers were inexcusable too. The getting cute with the play column was inexcusable too. The leaving a minute and a half on the clock when you're going down to score the go ahead touchdown was inexcusable. You know, like I said, uh, Keyshawn Nixon not just falling on the ball was inexcusable. Uh, Matt LaFleur going out there and eating Patrick Taylor's lunch for not getting out of bounds, man, that's not the tone you want to set either. I'm sorry. I understand why you're frustrated. You think every Packer fan wasn't screaming the same way Matt LaFleur was, but you've got to be the leader. You've got to keep that. Like, what that tells your team is, damn, our coach is rattled. He's nervous. He's scared right now. He thinks we're going to lose this game. Rather than calm, cool, collective, pull them to the side. Yeah, you can, you can, uh, you can ream them out on the sideline, but to do it the way he did and throw a little temper tantrum, man, that's just not a, that's not a good look. But anyway, Andy, thank you so much for the super chat, bud. Appreciate it. Let's see if there's anything else we can hit on in here in the chat. Let's go to the box score real quick. You want to look at the stats real quick, Tim? Is that cool with you? No. Oh, <laughs> he said no, but we're going to <laughs> talk about it, right? So Jordan Love finished 25 of 39 for 218, uh, had a touchdown, had an interception. He was sacked twice, passed a rating of 76.7, comparing him to Tommy DeVito. Tommy DeVito was 17 of 21, 17 of 21 for 158, a touchdown with a passer rating of 113.9. Uh, Saquon Barkley, 20 carries for 86 yards. He averaged 4.3 a pop. Of course, Tommy DeVito scrambling, 10 carries, 71 yards. The read option, the huge chunk play on the read option. I challenge everybody, go watch that. You can see it on the TV copy, too. Watch Kingsley and Igbare and how he doesn't stay at home. He just crashes on the running back and leaves that read option wide open. That's the big problem there. And then, of course, I mean, he was he was juking linebackers out of their shoes. Tommy DeVito was. Yeah. so. Just tough. As far as the running game, uh, A.J. Dillon never really did get it together. 15 carries for 53 yards, only 3.5 a pop. Uh, Jaden Reed had four carries for 38 yards. Patrick Taylor, four carries for 30 yards. And then, of course, uh, A.J. Dillon had the two catches. That one, that long there of 35, he looks like he lost 10 yards on the other catch, which is just absolutely crazy to think about. But uh, he was a little bit of a factor in the passing game. Tucker Craft, man, it sucks that it's a loss, but kind of a coming out party for Tucker Craft. Four catches for 64 yards, caught all four targets. We may have a something there at the tight end position. Uh, Jaden Reed, eight catches, 27 yards. Like you're only averaging 3.4 yards a catch. You could tell they schemed to take him away. Another thing you got to put into consideration, too, in the second half was Dontavian Wicks going out with the injury. Yeah. I know Devontae Wyatt went out with the injury shortly, too, but. Um, Keyshawn Nixon had two fumbles, lost one, recovered one. Was that on the same play, Tim? I guess it was, wasn't it? That's where that's where you get the two fumbles. Am I thinking right or did he fumble another time? Yeah, I'm what yeah, they're so they're calling the muff punt a fumble, basically. And you he know. picked it up and, and then, then he, he fell it. on it and decided to try and get up with it. And that's when he coughed it up again. Yeah, Got it. that makes sense. So um <laughs> two fumbles on one play is a bad look. I don't care which way you slice it. Uh, Jordan Love had his fumble that he lost there, obviously didn't protect the football. On defense, Darnell Savage uh, led the way with seven tackles, but, man, he missed – I think I counted three missed tackles. His tackle grade is going to be pretty bad, even though he led the team in tackles. Isaiah McDuffie played pretty decent, it seemed like, had one tackle for a loss, kind of set the tone early there. Uh, Devontae Wyatt had a tackle for a loss. Kenny Clark had two tackles for a loss. Like I said, Rashawn Gary had the only quarterback hit. Not a whole lot there. Um, yeah, just, uh, just a tough look all the way around. Let's go back to the, uh, the chat here real quick. Um, on defense, Tim, what stuck out to you on defense? You're kind of a defensive guy. Do you, and listen, if you disagree with me, it's cool. I want people to disagree with me. I just don't want people, uh, you know, cheering the fact that the Packers, you know, lost the game, you know what I mean? <laughs> and coming in here to dunk on people. I, I was but, seeing it like you were pretty much you know, over pursuit. You know, over aggressive. Um, 
you know, on the blitzes. Guys are just getting, you know, washed out of plays. They're, they're, you know, you're getting, you're getting your man beat, which is good. But yeah, you know, you're, you're over pursuing. And then this kid just steps up and, you know, you got, you got DeVito looking like Mike Vick, you know, it's just <laughs> the Packers were not ready for that. They did not think for a second. I, I agree with the the thought that maybe they thought he'd bounce around laterally and try and pick us apart, but to just allow this to happen all day and not adjust. I, I was one thing that stuck out to me. That was frustrating yeah. that there was no adjustment. It just continued. We continued to do the same thing over and over again. And we still didn't get a sack. We still didn't get the pressure on him. So, um, you know, definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different result. And we saw a little bit of insanity with our approach today. Um, defensively, uh, guys were not gap discipline. Um, you know, we talked about uh, you just mentioned in Igbari there breaking breaking his uh, contain there on the edge, which cost us dearly. Um, you know, so there were there was plenty of mistakes to go around defensively. I'm 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 trying to think of who had a really good game today. You know, like who who really played well today. I think you're right. LVN looked pretty good. Uh, McDuffie was, uh, you know, I feel like McDuffie was probably playing the hardest out there. I I really do. Like I just that defense didn't look like that had that fire that it had, you know, these last couple of weeks. So um, I don't know. It's just tough loss, demoralizing loss, man. This is, uh, you know, it's not over. We don't need to get too down in the dumps. You know, there's still a, a chance we make the playoffs, you know, but it's got, it's a little bit slimmer of a chance now. So. Yeah, definitely. We got Emilio in here now. Emilio come in to clean it up, man. How many daddy sodas you had tonight, Emilio? I need too many. To too many. I kept pausing the game, so uh, I got a little uh, delayed by the time I got on here. <laughs> I looked down, I said, uh-oh. <laughs> but it's like one of those where you put the phone to the side and it's just buzzing anyway, so you're just like, all right, I'm just going to sit through it. And then I, by the time I looked down, I was like, oh, man, this is – I am late to the party. <laughs> oh, Lord. I think we just missed the fireworks. Justin from Packernet Podcast just texted me and said, damn, LaFleur just hammered Keyshawn on a live press conference. He's not wrong, but dang, dude. Save that for a personal conversation. Oh man! Oh, I mean, okay. you, you saw they they made the decision fast enough to pull him off returns. I mean, who was returning kicks after he fumbled that? You know, guys. There's this just confirms it now. There's 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 something going on, yeah. right? There's a disconnect. There's something. There's some. There's some weird weird energy going on because that that's not cool, right? That's yeah. not cool, man. Like you can't. Like you just said, Clayton, lighting them up on the sideline during the game, uh, you know, the Patrick Taylor, uh, you know, incident kind of not incident, but just, you know, that that approach. And then you follow it up like. I don't know, man, that's Wait, not so a good look. I miss it, Tim. You're you're good with him yelling at Patrick Taylor. Or you're not. I'm not it. good with that. I'm you're with Clayton with on that, that there's a better way to handle that. You know, so I guess all I would say is that's I mean, I feel like that's how coaching has been. I mean, from when I played, it was like, dude, if, if you need a response, maybe it's just because we were younger, you know, but you you responded more well to like having um, like punishments or like, you know, a, like a raised voice kind of thing. But I, I totally get you on that. Like, it's tough, especially when it's everybody's eyes are on it. Like, yeah. And, and there's, if you look like, at Taylor, he knew the minute he cut yeah. back, oh, yeah. in, he turned around like, oh, what am I doing? So he yeah. knows he screwed yeah. up. So to come off the field and get it from your coach like that. No, I hear you there for sure. Like, and then, yeah, yeah and now, like, it, I can't, I, man, I know, I, know I, I can't wait like, to watch the presser. I, I, I want to hear what he said because. Well, we've got it right here. Um, I, I, I know people are going to say they're paid athletes. They can handle it. You know, John That's Madden, not what it's about, though. Right. John Madden used to say, I remember John Madden in a football life. He said, there's nothing worse. Like when a player makes a mistake for you to go out there and yell at them, it does nothing for them. Right. They, they know they messed up. Yep. They it's, it's bothering them more than it's bothering you. So what good is it going to do to try to embarrass them in front of everyone? Right. Um, listen, I grew up with some hard coaches. I was right. telling you, Co coach Morris, Roger Morris, He's in the Kentucky High School football or uh, baseball Hall of Fame, sports Hall of Fame, I should say. That man was as hard as they come, but he was a darn good coach. Um, some people respond to a pat on the rear end. Others respond to being scolded. And a good coach, a good leader, understands what each player needs. They said Lombardi was perfect at it. He had it down to a T. 
people said, you know, he treated everybody the same like dogs and uh, other people, other people that played for him, other players came out and said, no, he didn't. He, he treated this guy totally different than he treated this guy. Uh, you know, it's just it's one of those things in Matt LaFleur's coaching style that's definitely a negative. I'm not calling for him to be fired. You guys heard us. We just talked about it. he's he's literally top 10 all time in winning percentage. So I mm-hmm. need to back off that a bit. You can fan how you want to fan. I'm just saying I'm backing off that a little bit. Right. But, you know, you got to call it, you know, as you see it now. Hopefully we can hear this. You know how they do, man. These pressers, it's like you can hear the reporters, but you can't hear the coaches. He looks like he's holding that mic pretty firm, though. My man looks pissed. Let's see what Coastal Floor had to say. This may not even include that, uh, what Justin was talking about, but it's a four-minute clip that the Packers posted, so it may be edited. So viewer discretion is advised. There we go. Execute to the best of our ability. Look at him. He's already (laughs) got the spike hit. He is so mad, bro. Give me a janky mic again and see what happens. So you guys played so well the last couple of weeks. Did you sense anything like this coming during the week? Or what? No, not at all. That's why it's disappointing. Uh, you know, you get you get a Monday night game and a big stage, and I thought we had a good week of preparation. I thought our guys, um, you know, in practice it was pretty clean, but ultimately you got to do it on, on game day. What did Tommy DeVito show you tonight? Oh, he's a hell of a competitor. Um, certainly, we were running by him left and right. Couldn't get him. I, I, we ended up with zero sacks, I believe. Um, you know, and they've, I think, 69 coming into this game. Um, so, you know, give credit to them. They obviously outcoached us, outplayed us. Um, but we had, I feel, felt like a lot of times we had flybys right by the quarterback, and we didn't, for whatever reason, <laughs> just miss the quarterback. Matt, what happened on the final drive there on your, your defensive side of the ball? Uh, we were obviously gave up too many chunk plays, uh, lost our leverage twice, and, you know, gave up, uh, like I said, just explosive plays. Explosive plays lead to points. You cannot do that in that critical situation. Um, we were off, way off on, on one of the throws where they get an easy hitch and get like 10 yards. So um, it was just bad ball. You mentioned you were disappointed, but how critical is it to lose a game like this at this stage? They're all critical. Hey, do, do, do these questions bother anybody else? Like, does it not feel like they're just trying to trigger him? Like, yeah. how bad does it feel, Coach, to lose a game like this? You know what That's I'm saying? That's exactly what they're trying to do. Oh, drives me nuts, man. They're all critical. So, uh, you know, but we better have a short memory. You got to learn from it and move on. And we're on a short week now against a team that also in Tampa that's that's fighting for their playoff lives and, uh, you know, the leaders of their division. So we're going to have to play a lot better than we did tonight in order to come out on top. Yeah, but I think there's like six teams in that six and seven spot. You guys are one of them. What's it going to take over the final month to separate yourselves from, from that group? You got to play. You got to play. Uh, you got to execute and you got to play good football. And you got to play complementary football. It's got to be all three phases. I thought we we were hurt early in the game with a lot of penalties, um, but you could look and and Nick Pitt uh, each phase of the game. Special teams wasn't good enough. Offense wasn't good enough. Defense wasn't good enough. So all three collectively. And when you when you're bad in all three phases, that's what happens. You lose the game. How do you think you handled the pressure today? It looked like maybe it forced Jordan a little off target on some of the throws. And- I thought for the most part, I mean, they got us a couple times, but for the most part, I thought, uh, you know, we just, we were off in the past game in general, it felt. Uh, just missed a few throws here and there, which is going to happen. I thought it was, I thought he was pretty resilient in his approach in terms of just continuing to battle and obviously threw a touchdown pass there at the end of the game, had another one that, you know, we didn't come down with. Um, but all in all, you know, consistently throughout the course of the game just was not good enough. Matt, on the uh, end round plays that Jaden Reed, a couple of them got stuffed up early on. What made you go back to it then for that last play that looked like the bridge? Yeah, it's just obviously a bad call. Matt, on uh, Keyshawn's fumble, when a guy mops it, he's just better off just staying. Yeah, absolutely. You can't do that. I mean, um, you're kind of in a panic mode anyways when you muff the ball and then you you uh, re-gather that and, you know, just – not, not, not the smartest play in that situation. 
You guys good? Thank you. Take care. All right, that's it. Um, I don't think there's anything else to it. So, Justin, buddy, you're trying to – I know you're listening to this tomorrow at work. I don't know if you're trying to get me riled up or what, big dog, but I didn't think it was too bad. Um, what, what did you think, Amelia? What he said about uh, Keyshawn? I mean, I mean, he did say you can't do that. Right. I mean, what else are you going to say, though? You know, right. at that point, it's like, hey, no, no. I mean, I, hey, I'd rather let him fumble it. Well, no, I mean, you got to hop on it, <laughs> hold on to it. So, um, but it was just, it was kind of the fact that it was a couple compounded issues with Keyshawn. You know, if it was just a fumble, we'd have been all right. If it wasn't him that got burned on that, you know, that uh, that corner out there um, to get him into field goal range, then we would probably not be as mad at him. But, you know, after he fumbles and you stack on, you know, a missed tackle, stack on the, you know, the, the missed coverage there, it, it just, it gets a bad taste in your mouth. And Matt's got that bad taste right now. He's not happy with them. And they're just, they're just prodding them. I mean, I wouldn't want to be answering questions like that right now. But, no, not at all. Um, you know, they're professionals. It's got to happen. It's what they do. It's part of the job. But, you know, they got, they always got to answer. Yeah, Definitely. Badger Trio says another another or after last year, Nixon's so frustrating this year. Yeah, it's a, mm -hmm. it's a tough look for sure. That's why we went ahead and played that to try to get that sound bite. Appreciate you, Badger Trio. Jennifer Wright with the super chat. Thank you so much. I like when Reed missed that touchdown. I like when Reed missed that touchdown throw. Dobbs put his arm around him. Wicks went out. A lot to learn from, but season is not over. Completely agree. You know, mm -hmm. completely agree. Still a shot at the playoffs. Now I'm not going to sit here and pretend like, hey, this team can go on a big run, you know, when you play like tonight. If they could have pulled that win off, right, somehow, some way, you come out going, man, how do you how do you still win that ball game down the stretch? But didn't happen. But you do have to give – listen, Jordan Love played horrible, absolute booty cheeks first mm -hmm. half. But down the stretch, showed a little moxie. Got it in the end zone when you needed it, right? Um, then it, it goes back on the defense and Barry, you know, for sure. But thank you, Jim, for appreciate it. United Bates says, I don't see that him – that as him calling out Nixon, he's going to be asked a thousand times about it. He has to answer. He didn't bring it up and blast him. I agree. You know, mm -hmm. thank you for the super chat, buddy. I completely agree. I don't think that was bad at all. Um, yeah, that, yeah. yeah so Maybe well, Justin right. just heard the, the last part and not the, not the entire presser. You know, if, right. you, if you, if you just hear that, you're thinking, damn, he's throwing Keyshawn under the bus. Right. He threw everybody on the bus. He threw himself under the bus too. You mm -hmm. know, yeah, so, so every, it was a team loss like yeah. at the top, you know, Team wise. That's it. What's more telling, like I said, I think is the fact that he got yanked off the kicking. You know, he got yanked off returns. He got yanked off punt returns. You got yanked off kick returns. Also, that's that's more telling. I mean, we didn't have the backup slaughter. I feel like they're going to start yanking him from there now. We got to so. gotta figure something out quick then, because we cannot possibly put another thing on Jaden Reed's plate right now. I mean, this dude is we're jet sweeps and running routes and now your kicks and punts like man like <laughs> and that was the and we talked about that before like tim and clayton when we were trying to you know look at the outside zone the only thing we had for outside zone was Jaden reed or jet sweeps like that's all we had for outside zone aj dylan was eating he was harvesting corn today but besides <laughs> that nobody else was <laughs> nobody else was grinding it like we couldn't get any outside runs we couldn't get it to the outside we, you know we were up the middle or passing, we we got one dimensional quick, and it and it and it showed. John Deere Green on a hot summer night. It's not near as funny after a lot. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's really not. I needed to see uh, that once, though. I needed to see it. Yeah, we gotta have it, man. You kidding me? That's what we're here for. We're here to lean on each but other. But for real, bro. though, you see him break all those tackles. Take it. I mean, feed that man. Beat him out there with that straw hat on. John Benson, thank you for the super chat, buddy. He said you're better than Nagler, LOL. Um, I don't I don't know what to say to that. <laughs> I, I can only imagine what kind of meltdowns happening over there right now. <laughs> yeah. And listen, listen, listen. I gotta be honest. I like Cheesehead TV. Okay, I do. Um, I like sober Nagler better than drunk Nagler. I'm just gonna put that on the record. I guarantee you, sober Nagler would like sober Clayton better than drunk Clayton, right? I just choose not to kind of show that side. Uh, I I guess there's a, some form of respect you give to someone that's willing to get that sauced up and talk live stream. I, I've got a bad enough self-image. I don't like to talk on, on camera sober. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> I couldn't imagine me slobbering over myself. Right? Not that he is. I'm saying I would be. If I had to listen, there's some, there's some, uh, 
some some Tennessee bourbon right here on the other side over here on the bar setup. Can't dip into that. Not a lot of drinking at Lost Cedar, boys. That, that leads words bad. get flowing, right, Clayton? Yep. Yeah, bad words get the flow. <laughs> and what ends up happening is you'll hear a knock on this door. Uh-oh. And Mandy will call me Thomas, which is my middle name. Um, you know, we we started dating when I was 17 and she was 15. So she heard my parents say many times, when they use the they use the name Thomas, it's about to hit the fan. Mm-hmm. So, she when she breaks out Thomas, it's uh, I straighten up. You know what I mean? <laughs> but all right, let's see here. Number one Packer fan coming in positive. But again, John, thank you for the super chat, buddy. He said, I just left Cheesehead TV. It's not that bad. LOL. <laughs> so good deal. Glad they're holding it together over there for sure, man. Um, and uh, look at this turning into the Nagler chat. I like it. Two over this says Nagler's a lot nicer in person than, than on the chats. I think we all are, to be honest with you. But uh, yeah. All right. With that being said, we're at the 48 minute mark. We can continue to hit stats. We can talk about other things. Uh, definitely got in all the super chats. Appreciate you guys hanging out with us. Um, if you guys got any more questions, comments in the chat, I don't think there's any reason for 160 people to just hang out in here and be miserable together. Mm-hmm. But we're here for that if you need us. All right. Uh, Badger Trio, right on cue with the super chat says, uh, Love got late game lead. Uh, we've seen growth, uh, no INT at the end. That's what I was trying to say, man. Um, you know, that's one positive coming out of it. Again, I'm not trying to deny the fact that he played horrible in the first half. And I'm not trying to sit here and say this was a good defensive performance. Um, yeah. I just wish we could see see a stay with zone match rather than kind of switching up the man there and getting burned at the end. That's the tough part for me because you, you, was- you, you never get a true answer. You know what I'm saying? You never get right. a true evaluation. It's just tough. But Do you think it was because they were in a lot of, like, cover one, Meg, that, that we kind of thought, hey – we, we need to kind of go to that as well. Cause I mean, they were in it. They, it seemed like they were in cover one a lot. Um, and uh, even when we did it, the problem is we, we, we ran cover one mega a couple of times and I saw late there um, Savage had to close on DeVito when he was climbing the pocket. Like at that point, we, at that point, I think we were bringing five and, and when Savage closed, there was nobody else over there. So, um, you know, it's, it's tough. Yeah, you know, for me, I think the difference between the two defenses is their pass rush hit home and ours didn't, you know. Uh, we were running crazy, though. I mean, like Matt was saying, we were five right up, up the field. Yeah. Like, what you are you doing? You guys got to create the pocket when you rush. Right. That was tough. That was a tough one, to, tough pill to swallow. But, you know, the positive coming out of it, too, is like what Coach LaFleur said. You kind of reset, man. You look, you, you kind of read your press clippings a little bit. I, I don't know. That's 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 a little unfair to say. We don't know if they actually did. It sure looks like it on the surface, but you go back and you learn from it, right? That's what you got to do. Uh, Badger Trio, thank you for the super chat, buddy. Uh, Tim Reese with the super chat. Thanks, pal. Appreciate you. He said, decision making from from the start let us down. These guys are the best in the biz. How does this happen? Um, everybody has a bad night, you know. Um, that place too, man. There were a lot of Packer fans there. Mm-hmm. But I did notice down the stretch when the Giants kind of started to pull away a bit, it got loud. That place was buzzing. And I, and I listen, I know Packer fans don't want to hear this, but every time they showed the DeVito family, I, I was kind of grinning a little bit like they're really buying into a bad football team. And you got to respect that. Like that that place looked like they were excited about their team tonight. Mm-hmm. And as a, as a rival fan base, what happened, kind of cool to see, you know. You got to give credit where credit's due. They just – they beat them, you know. And again, we're not surprised. We talked about it. We got made fun of for talking about. It. What do you mean trap game? Man? Right. This is what it looks like, <laughs> you know. Don't want to speak it into existence, but it kind of is what it is, you know. Uh, thanks though, Tim. We appreciate you, buddy. Um, as far as let me get back to your question. We didn't really answer it. How does this happen? Let's go around the let's go around the horn here with that decision making from the start. Let us down. These guys are the best in the biz. How does this happen? I'm assuming you're talking about love because you know turning the ball over twice. Um, to me, as far as him being kind of careless with the ball tonight, it looked like he was a little hopped up, man. Like he was, you know, trying too hard early on. I noticed some of the balls. Did you notice the wobblers, Tim, Emilio? There were several wobblers that Mm -hmm. come out. But typically what that is, is you're trying to overthrow the football. You're trying to put too much on it, right? And and you're not just – and the second half looked like a totally different quarterback. Touch on the passes, good accuracy. A couple of times he threw them underneath. I'm going, oh, he's going to overthrow it. No, oh, well, look, okay, the accuracy settled down. It's what we've seen earlier in the in the year. You know, um, the the inaccuracy kind of 
kind of came back. You guys want to take a shot at that, Tim, Emilio, that question there? Um, I don't think um, we uh, – I mean, from the start, just decision-making letting us down, I can see. Um, I think we tried to get out and get going early. You know, we kind of predicted that. If we win the toss, we're going to take the ball, right? And we saw that. We won the toss. We took the ball. And we came out, and we were pretty aggressive pretty early. Um, and you you talk about that pregame, Clayton, about trying to do too much too quick, too fast, and not – build a rhythm neither one of these teams really settled into a rhythm they did you know, all so that the, the, you know you got yourself into a you know into a bar fight that's what mm-hmm. happened you know went went to new york and got in a bar fight that's what happened tonight and um yeah decision making and crunch time is crucial and we made some some boneheaded knuckleheaded mistakes today um and there's very few people that are on the roster or on that staff that are absolved from that. I mean, there were mistakes around. I couldn't believe the wasted challenge we had for Matt LaFleur on that one. That was and, rough. I mean, he was literally standing right there watching it. The play happened five feet in front of him. And watching the replay. And Yeah, and you're getting replay, and, it's, and you still threw the challenge flag. It's like, my goodness. But, I mean, that's so. the least of our concerns. But – um you know, scheme wise, I just I think defensively the thing that let me down the most was the fact that I I just didn't see any adjustments made, not even at halftime. Like we didn't even come out with a different a different look or anything. You know, and it just went from bad to worse. And then of course, in true Packer fashion, we found a way to still be in the game. Um, you know, the game never really was truly away from us in this one. Um, and we stuck around and thought we were gonna sneak out of there and steal it, but but we didn't, you know, lack of execution and and some boneheaded mistakes and yeah, poor decision making. I I can see it. Definitely, Randy Steen. Thank you for the super chat, man. He said, uh, not sure if it was discussed, but the two point play call seems strange to me. That play stopped working three quarters ago. Wish the ball stayed in Love's hands. I agree. Um, and it's kind of what Matt they just asked Matt about that, didn't they, Emilio? And he said, just yeah. a bad call. It's a bad mm-hmm. call. So. I think, yeah, I think he maybe have gone, had gone to the well a couple too many times with it. But like I was saying earlier, we weren't getting anything else stretch wise from the running game or we didn't try it. I mean, I didn't I don't really remember seeing A.J. Dillon go out on a couple stretch plays. It seemed like we were, you know, leaning on the pass a little heavy. It looked like he was trying to pass to open the run. And I would have liked it the other way around again. But, you know, um, you know, it's been working for us. So why stop it? You know, that's why we were marching, marching down the field the past couple games. As we were, you know, we were leaning um, heavier on that, but RG3 broke it down at the beginning of, you know, pregame. The Matt's four S's, you know, shrink, show, you know, set up and and uh, snap or something was the other one. But like, we're, you know, Love was eating them up with the play action, but I didn't see a lot of it tonight. You know, that that actually worked out for anything. And on top of that, it seemed like you said it. Everyone was trying to make things happen. You know, everyone was trying to. Stretch it a little long. When Pat when Patrick Taylor got yelled at, he was trying to make an extra move. You know, he was trying to get more yards. Love was trying to, you know, drive those passes in, put a little, put them a little too hot. Um, Carlson was trying to, you know, drive the leg and put it a little wide. And it seemed like everyone was kind of reaching. Um, you know, they they filled the hole. They missed it. You know, McDuffie got thrown over on one of them runs. It was, you know, it was everybody. It wasn't just the offense and defense, special teams. All three phases um, struggled tonight. And it uh, it showed. I mean, uh, we we saw that you know this being a trap game, uh, but now it's uh, on the list of hey, we fell into a trap game. It happened. You know, we fell into the booby trap. We got hit. Now we need to make sure that the rest of these, if they are so called trap games, moving forward, we don't. The same thing doesn't happen. But it's it's crazy too. If you if you like look at the box score, you could say, how does the defense give up twenty four points? They lost this game. Mm-hmm. And someone could counter and say, we well, turned the ball over three times. And right. you go, oh, okay, that makes sense. And then you go, well, you lost by two points. If you just hit that fourth field goal, then you win by one, right? And it's like, yeah, but he hit three or four. Like, you're, you're literally walking mm-hmm. circles. It's the epitome of a team loss. Yep. It's just not playing complimentary football all the way around the board. Yeah. So. Um, you know, fellas, I got early morning. Appreciate y'all. Hey, get out of here, buddy. Appreciate the fans. Hit that like button over here, right down there, underneath Tim once I leave. <laughs> and uh, appreciate everyone, man. Go pack. Right. Appreciate you, man. Have a good night, Emilio. Good night, Emilio. And again, Randy, thank you for the super chat, pal. We appreciate you. I think there was one more in here. 
Yeah, I'm trying to get down to it. I apologize. Seti with the super chat. I have to remind myself each week that this is the youngest offense in the NFL. I see good stuff from the young guys each week, and they never give up. Very well said. Um, again, we uh, I, I think no. If if you had said you know five weeks ago we're going to beat the Chargers, the Lions, and the Chiefs, you'd have probably said you're smoking crack, right? There ain't no way that this young team's going to beat those three teams, right? So this right here kind of puts you back on par with a chance to make the playoffs, but you're not kind of riding high in the playoffs. Like, hey, look, if we get hot, we could, we could maybe go kind of deep into the playoffs. I don't think anybody thinks this team can compete with the 49ers or even the Cowboys for that matter, right? I think at this point it's just, like Matt said, grow from the loss, right? Coastal floor said grow from the loss, figure out how to get better. And uh, you got one of the young, you got the youngest roster in the league. It is what it is. Tough loss, no doubt about it. But um, I think that's very well said what you said there, though, Seti, and we appreciate the super chat. Man. Let's do this, Tim. Let's uh, let's give away a jersey. You want to? Let's do something yeah, positive buddy. here, man. Feels funereal in here. You know what I mean? So, get us a win. Let's get a win for the night here. <laughs> We're going to end it on a win. That's all right. right. So all of the members of the PTA posse, right? Uh, if you guys are new here, um, people who are members of the YouTube group, uh, you can join right here on the YouTube channel on the lamp, on the homepage. Uh, we enter you into a contest to win autograph memorabilia. Okay. So tonight we're going to be giving away an autograph Robert Brooks Jersey. Jeff Silkey just won the autograph Dorsey Levins Jersey. That's going to be mailed out here in a couple of days. So congratulations to him. This is going to be for the autograph Robert Brooks Jersey. What we're going to do here, guys, we're going to spin it three times just in case, Someone doesn't claim the prize that has happened before because some people don't always watch the channel. So with that being said, let's spin it three times and see who wins this autograph Robert Brooks jersey. Here we go. Big money, no whammy. Big money, no whammy. <laughs> what do we and got? First place winner is Stinson. So if Stinson's in the chat uh, tonight, email me, PackersTotalAccess at gmail.com and we will get your address and get that jersey sent out to you. We're going to spin it two more times just in case Stinson doesn't come forward, and we're going to give you ample enough time, roughly a week, to claim that prize. The second one is No Limit underscore Coop. No Limit underscore Coop is the second place winner. And then let's do it one more time just to, just to be safe and make sure we give it away. Here we go. Third stringer. Here we go. Third on the depth chart. Tommy DeVito. <laughs> what we got here? Will. All right, Will. That'll be a tough one to prove that it's you. Such a common name. We'll have to do two or three checks to make sure someone isn't still in that jersey from good old Will. But it is what it is. Let's get back to the chat here. So, again, congratulations to Stenson um, for winning the autographed Robert Brooks jersey. Um, just shoot me an email, PackerSolaccess at gmail.com, no limit underscore coop. If that's you, shoot me the same email in case Stinson doesn't come forward, and then will shoot me an email too in case those top two don't come forward. So let's get back to the chat here real quick. AJJ with the super chat. Thank you so much. We are still holding the seventh seed and in control of the destiny. Is that right? Even after the loss tonight, still the seventh seed. That's pretty wild, Tim. So good news, right? Uh, yeah. Are we sure about that? <laughs> you sure we, appreciate about the, that? we appreciate the super chat there ajj but can you confirm can we confirm that that legit true can oh, Jake? whatever it's not for long right so you it'll sure change either way <laughs> you sure about that jake uh, jake shavink do me a favor man double check that fact check that for me uh we would love to uh know if that's true or not because that's great news that you can have an absolute dumpster fire of a game and still be the seven seed that's pretty wild uh, appreciate the super chat, AJJ. I hope you're correct there, man. Chris M with the super chat said, "Grateful you bring happiness in times of despair." Chris, you know me, and I'm trying, buddy, but it's been a tough one tonight. <laughs> Twitter was absolute garbage tonight. Um, like I said, just the people that kind of thriving in the in the victory of defeat, if that's possible. But uh, it is what it is, man. But I appreciate the kind words. We're always listen. Win, lose, or draw. This season's going to be over soon. I'm not going to be miserable during football season. This is the it. best time of the year, man. I'm going to enjoy this all year long, and we're going to talk about what happened, why did it happen, all those things, right? And here we go. I was waiting on it. 
number one Packer fan says rigged. LOL. I'm gonna use it, use the line every time, guys. This is the most the safest, most secure giveaway in US history. All right. And then of course we're gonna end it with this with Lucky, with the uh the ever famous 65%. 65%. That's what we 65%. We uh, are the seventh. Yeah, the Zane seventh. Strong, member of the PTA posse, says confirmed Packers is the seventh seed. Baby G. All right, there you go. So I think he was trying to say go back, go. Cool. Um, and then Red Mo says, agreed, Clayton, offseason is the worst season. Man, it's it's so sad, dude, especially it's like the coldest part of winter to February to, to the draft is just miserable for me. But, uh, yeah. All right, cool. Um, Jennifer Wright, she, she, she done put me on the spot, says, see you for good morning, Lambeau. I was thinking about taking the morning off, Jennifer, but since you said that, I'll see you for good morning, Lambo. All right, we'll do it. Sounds good to me. Tim, parting thoughts, man, on this uh, tough loss here. Giants win 24 to 22 over the Packers, bro. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I've got a, one thing. Um, I, I might as well complain about something else besides how our team played, right? Um, that coverage tonight was. I like I'm sorry, but maybe this is just like I don't care about the Miami game. Like stop that trying to wild. show me two games at one time. Just show the game that I'm watching in my market. Like that what you ended up with when they were trying to do that was like bad coverage of both games. <laughs> You, you know, like I'm all for the update. Like we all know we're updated in this world every five seconds. Like you're, you're not going to not know what the score is in the other game that's happening. Let, let's, you know, talk about the fact that why, why were there two Monday night games happening at the same time? Why do we, we ever understand why that, like what, what was the significance or the purpose of that? I don't, I don't understand that. Um, and then forcing fans to, to, you know, you're taking my big screen TV down a size, and now I'm I'm like Emilio sitting on the wood chair at at B Dubs, right? <laughs> he said I spend too much money. Yeah, <laughs> sitting on this hard A double S wooden chair, watching this team lose, watching watching this team lose from thirty for what do you say from twenty feet away on a thirty inch on a TV. thirty inch TV, right? And why is my yeah? I I don't I don't know. Yeah, I'm not a yeah. I don't know. I'm not a fan of the. I'm usually, you know, it's not bad. I'm a, Monday night football is like the OG, you know, like you love, love Monday night. You know, I used to love Monday night football as a kid, but like, I don't know, that rubbed me the wrong way where, you know, I'm charting the game. I'm sitting there, I'm locked in and it's like, what are you doing to my screen? What is going on? <laughs> no, it's, it's rough. Paul Robertson said, you're supposed to watch bowling in February. She Supposed loved to go to bowling it. in February. Everybody, uh, yeah, everybody happy. Jennifer put me on the spot and made me commit to Good Morning Lambo. Look, they said, whoop. Jennifer with a smiling emoji. Hey, Jennifer, look at this. And then, and then Jer- Greg Rice comes in and just says, gutted. <laughs> this right here, when you said coverage, I thought you were talking about this. I thought you were going to go there. Zane Strong said, I missed 29. Talking about yeah. Russell Douglas. No, I was talking about the, the television coverage. TV oh, and we'll, we'll see what happens to Trey. Uh, We'll see what the league says about his little uh, his little referee rant. That yeah. was a hey, that, was, that was hilarious and awesome to watch Joe Buck just squirm trying to cover <laughs> cover that because I don't know maybe Troy had a couple daddy sodas in him before the game or something, but he he totally spoke his mind there on national TV and you're not allowed to do that in that booth. Right. That's a no no. So we'll see what uh, see what happens. AJJ with the super chat. We appreciate you, buddy. He said, if doing two games, why not stagger the start times? Everyone said that very thing, AJJ. And they came back and said there was some kind of strategic purpose. They were trying to get some kind of data gathered. Or I can't remember what the BS excuse was, but I was just like, like I'm of the opinion, let's have one football game every night of the week. I would be cool with that. Like spread it out. I don't understand this whole having two Monday night games at the same time either. It was just silly. And like Tim said, then forcing you to watch a split screen of a game you don't even want to watch is just yeah. it's mind-boggling, man. Yeah. It really is. And then um, and vice versa, can you imagine the other way around, the AFC fans that are watching the Miami game, and they're like, we don't care about the Packer game. <laughs> you know, it's just, right. I don't know. Yeah. 
Crazy. But again, AJJ, thank you for the super chat. United Bates in the chat says, when we give memberships, they are chosen by YouTube and they say it goes to the ones who interact with the channel the most. I have found that not to be true. That is not true at all, Bates. I don't understand how they choose them, but it's just, it's completely random, bro, because oh. I'm telling you, man, a, a lot of these names that we've drawn, we never seen them again, right? And I know you guys are being a blessing and we appreciate it. And and I know people who have won, they definitely appreciate being gifted memberships. But yeah, it's just, it's crazy that it would just randomize it like that. You'd think it would be the ones who engage the most because I see people that are in here all the time, like mm -hmm. Redmo, you know what I mean? We would love Redmo to have one of those subscriptions and, and it, it's gifting it to some, some rando, right? It's just, it's really strange. It is. Um, RDC is another one we see in here a lot, right? Um, I've, I've seen Tony, uh, Acevedo in here as well. So, uh, yeah, boy, I, I said, said nice things about you, Tony, till you said this for those disappointed in the, in the team, the NBA had had this new in season tournament. You might enjoy uh -huh. take your basketball down. the street. <laughs> buddy. Ain't, ain't doing it. Ain't doing uh -huh. it. Red said, Thank you so much. Thank you, buddy. All right, let's get out of here, guys. I really appreciate y'all hanging out with us. Like I said, tough loss, man, but, uh, it's good to get in here and kind of talk it out a little bit. We're going to do a chalk talk this week. We'll be able to kind of dive into what happened on those explosive plays. I may look up to, I usually, you guys know me, I usually refrain from making too many detailed, detailed comments right after the game because a uh, good night to you, Drew. Appreciate you, buddy. Because, you know, you, you, you kind of watch the TV copy. You don't know exactly what the defense was that's covered, but when, when they hit that explosive on Keyshawn, I went, they look like man. And then Troy said, yeah, they're in man coverage here. And I'm just like, God. It was, man, I was hoping there would be some kind of zone match, you know, something there, but it was definitely, man. But, again, we'll break it all down on Chalk Talk and and kind of get to the uh, the bottom of why everything happened. Um, had a bunch of notes here, but you guys dominated in the chat. I would rather you guys control the control the conversation than me just read off my notes. So we appreciate you guys. I'm still looking for my notes. I don't know where, <laughs> I, don't know where I threw them, Clayton. I, I don't know. <laughs> hey, it is what it is, dude. Um Tough loss, man. You're gonna have that on these on these tough ones. Uh, I kept pretty good notes. I got a pretty good idea. Like I said, I won't bore you with all of them. We'll get to it on Chalk Talk. I'll make sure I keep my notes to kind of lean on them a little bit in that regard too, to uh, kind of steer the conversation in the right direction. But again, thanks to everybody who showed up tonight. It, I got to say this: kudos to you guys because it'd be real easy to go. I'm going to bed. I don't want to do this. I don't want to watch it. There's nothing wrong with that, but it says a lot about a Packers fan base that wants to talk about a tough loss like this and do it in a respectful way. I'm sure you guys ran across some disrespectful idiots throughout some point of the day. Um, it's probably best just to stay off social media so you don't have those interactions, but I just can't find myself to do it. I can't. I got – I like. Well, I'm a master, Clayton. I've, I've figured it out. Yeah. I can't yeah. do it during a game. I, it, I'm, it can be miserable. But yeah. you got some good ones too, so you miss out on the positive interaction too. It's just that block button got used a couple of times a day. <laughs> if people want to have a conversation just to be rude and disagree, man, I don't need it. Just don't need it. So um, I'll hit them with this. You can call me anything you want, but don't call me anything. That's right. Like Jake Chavink said here in the chat, always doing the responsible thing. We appreciate you, Jake. He said, hit that like button for us. If you guys would, hit the like button so other Packer fans can find this content. Um, and all that good stuff. That way, uh, you know, they can find the channel. Um, let's see, Paul Robertson said Clayton Twitter's wearing you down. I look like a look like an aged uh, president, don't I? You know, they go they go in, they they look like they're 50 years old, they come out looking like they're 80. Yeah. And for the most recent one, he went in looking like he was 80. Now he looks like he's 175. Um, <laughs> but it ages them all, man. It really does. Um, yeah, Twitter will do that to you, Paul. It'll wear you down if you let it. But you know, like like Coach LaFleur said, I'm a glutton for punishment. Right. Sometimes you just got to put your chin out there and take it, take it a couple times. Right. So it is yep. what it is. All right. We're out of here, guys. Tim, thank you for uh, shouldering this with me, bro. It's a tough one, but hey, hey, we're here. Good times and bad. Right. That's what being a fan is and supporting your man. team. Right. We're going to ride, ride with them either way. So yeah. it's like I told Mandy when we started doing this, when I started doing this pod, I'm like, listen, now, are you sure you want me? Because it was her idea. She was like, you need to, you need to start a podcast and start talking ball. Um, I was like, are you sure? Because win, lose, or draw, man, I'm not going to back away. We're going to talk ball if we're going to talk ball. We're not just going to talk ball when it's positive, right? And, again, yep. it's just uh, got to get out there and uh, and talk about what actually happened. Bill K in the chat says Tommy DeVito has that swagger, the energy, the confidence. 
the gravitas. Do impressed with the chicken cutlet king. What what does that mean? I don't know, but like I think Bill K might have been in the sauce too. I don't guys, know. <laughs> <laughs> you been, oh, you been hanging out with nags, ain't you, big dog? No. Oh man. <laughs> I'm going to try to drop in over there. Are they still live? Does anybody know if they're still live? I might swing in there and throw them a super chat just for craps and giggles. <laughs> but uh, anyway, um, you're right, though. Tommy DeVito does have a little swag. Got that got that chain hanging, right? Um, let's see. Jake Shavink says, we as a nation will cling to any somewhat decent backup quarterback performance. Yep. I noticed you in the chat earlier, Jake. You're usually pretty calm, but you wasn't, you wasn't having that Sean Clifford talk, were you, man? You wasn't having it. So... <laughs> All right, Jake Shavink said, listen, guys, it's my quarterback. And I agree, that is my quarterback. I got roasted for that earlier, too, on Twitter, man. I took it on the chin on Twitter, man. Got to go log in. I'm looking right now. I've got 74 notifications on Twitter. Yeah, you so, still are a quarterback, too. Yeah. I will say this, though. Twitter has blown up. I've gotten over 3 million impressions in the last 28 days. So, the interactions there. It's just do you wanna do you wanna actually have the interaction? That's the question. So yeah. All right. Appreciate you guys. You all you you guys and gals are awesome. We'll see you here in I don't know, probably about 45 minutes for Good Morning Land. So. <laughs> We're gonna take a nap. We'll we'll be back. Yeah. Y'all have a great night. Appreciate you as always. Let's go out and be the change we want to see in the world and go back up. The power sweep. Actually, it's the it's the lead play on our in our offense.